sao mùa bầu mùa bầu là chúng ta trông mong chúa giáng sinh chúng ta chuẩn bị lòng của chúng ta để ký niệm ngày con trời giáng thế đến để đem cho chúng ta sự cứu rỗi đến để đem cho chúng ta sự giải hòa với đức chúa cha đến để đem cho chúng ta sự bình an niềm hy vọng đến để đem cho chúng ta sự công chính của đức chúa trời ta ơn chúa vì điều đó to the Lent season and it is a rejoicing time this morning we will together study the theme of new affections in first john 2 7 to 17 let us look at the word of god beloved i am writing you no new commandment but an old commandment that you had from the beginning the old commandment is the word that you have heard at the same time it is a new commandment that i am writing to you which is true in him and in you because the darkness is passing away and the true light is already shining whoever says he is in the light and hates his brother is still in darkness whoever loves his brother abides in the light and in him there is no cause for stumbling but whoever hates his brother is in the darkness and walks in the darkness and does not know where he is going because the darkness has i am writing to you little children because your sins are forgiven for his name's sake i am writing to you fathers because you know him who is from the beginning I am writing to you, young men, because you have overcome the evil one. I write to you, fathers, because you know him who is from the beginning, the evil one. Do not love the world or the things in the world. For if anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh, and the desires of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not from the Father, but is from the world. And the world is passing away along with its desires, but whoever does the will of God abides forever. We are together studying a series of spiritual maturity or the journey of love so that we are transformed to be like jesus christ so that we with our mind soul and strength love god and love our neighbors as ourselves we are transformed to be like jesus more and more and this process starts with our mind our understanding of god's word and also our experience through his word and that leads us to placing our faith in the lord jesus christ and he leads us guides us and helps us to understand the will of god his ways to know his word to know what we need to know and we also learn to rely on the lord to be reconciled to god and also we come to him to so that he can guide and lead us. He, Jesus Christ, is the good shepherd that leads us, and the Holy Spirit is the one who is sent to us by God to dwell in us, to help us to acknowledge the Father more and more. And from the understanding of the Lord and, and having faith in Him, it leads to our change and our character. In Ephesians 3, 16 to 17, by faith, Christ dwells in your hearts. By faith, Christ dwells in your hearts. Our mind is transformed by God, and our character is transformed by God. And there are many aspects in our in our character that leads to the goodness in us that is um, in us that is transformed to be like Jesus Christ. This morning, we will together uh, study the first point of our character, that is our emotions or our affections, is transformed by the Lord. We are transformed through His Word, through God's Word. Before becoming a Christian, before uh, believing in Jesus Christ, there are things that people desire. They desire sexual movies, 
bad uh, stories or, or alcohol or greed or jealousy. Uh, they would push other people down in order so that they can ra rise up. And they would talk bad about other people. Before coming to the Lord, they have changed the goodness that God gave to them, become things that they worship, idols that they desire and worship. God gives us a lot of good, but people have transformed it or changed, uh, make it into um, idols, such as um, sexual desires, um, alcohol, everything else that is in life that they have not only desire those things, but they also want other people to desire those things. And before, in the past, we were also amongst those people. We have done things that we have accused in others. Before coming to know Christ, people do not like anything that relates to God. When they read the Bible, they are bored. They want to go to sleep. They cannot fall asleep, they would take out the Bible to read so that they can fall asleep. When they hear the preaching of God's Word and it is too close to their hearts and it, they don't like it, they get upset. They don't like that people talk about God to them. They don't enjoy reading Christian articles and seeing that worship is a burden and also going to church becomes just a habit, a routine, or just to let other people know that, oh, I'm kind of religious, just to keep the out, outer appearance and seeing that everything that belongs that, to God, such as righteousness, holiness, and serving God is no desire, but they even rebel against those things. That is the person before they come to know Christ. But after they come to know Christ, there is a new, uh, a renewal, a transformation. They desire things that, about God that in the past they did not desire. And they no longer like or love evil. And now, after they come to know Christ, they love things that God loves and hate things that God hates. Pastor Duong Ban Ming, before coming to the Lord, he had an experience with God that is so uh, amazing that he recorded. At the end of 1931, I was very touched and desired to read the Bible. I wanted to read Genesis to Revelations. I memorized the books of the Bible, the Ten Commandments, and the Apostles' Creed. And in the morning, early morning, I would start from chapter 1. And whichever verse God touches me with, I would mark it. And when it comes lunchtime, I would just pause. And then in the evening, I would continue. And I would continue to desire and just really and, and dwell in reading the Bible as if I was living in a new world. In the past, I had a habit of um, addiction to smoking. And even after coming to Christ, I continued in that addiction. But I, when I came to the Lord, I was like a little babe desiring milk. And so I was into reading the Bible. And I continued to read the Bible. I forgot to even smoke. And I lived as a person who didn't desire or didn't smoke. And so one day, one morning, I saw on the road, there was a sign, smoke, smoke. And, they, and I would thought, I would think, oh, people are still smoking. And then I just remembered, oh, I no longer smoke as other people smoke. And so he also shared that one day, he was in the country. Uh, and countryside and many people did not know the gospel yet and so he was very on fire and desired to share about the gospel to these people and so he came one day and and shared and some people came but because he did not know how to preach after sharing about a month he no longer know what to preach about so people still didn't come and so people didn't they stopped coming but Prince Lord that three families came to know Christ and they came to teach them uh, the doctrines of the faith. And so he rejoiced in proclaiming the word of God to his people. There, it was a transformation in that person, in that man. In the past, he did not desire the word of God, and now he did. In the past, he desired and was addicted to smoking, and now he had no desire to smoke. And now he had a yearning to preach the gospel to others, to desire that his desires has been changed. And when we talk about affection, people will say, um, 
to uh, there are seven affections that we all have to be uh, happy, to be angry, to be hate, uh, to hate, to desire. Those are affections. But in the Lord, we want to emphasize two affections that is love and hate. The reason why we have this because we have affection. And God uses us to use our affections. Affections are a gift, a good gift that God gives to us. But if we have the wrong objects of our affection, then the affection becomes very dangerous. And so that is the reason why God teaches us what to love and what not to love, what to hate and what not to hate. Isaiah 61 verse 8 says, Because I, Jehovah God, loves righteousness and hates uh, in 1 Corinthians say, 13 say that love must hate evil and love good. Let it come to the Lord in prayer. Lord, please shine in our hearts and minds through your word this morning. Help us to understand your word. Father, help us to help uh, as people who know your word to have faith in you. And Lord Jesus, help us and draw in us and transform our character to become more like you in love to God, in love to others, and that we will hate evil and sin and the system of this world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. There are four things that I'd like to share with you this morning. First of all, we talk about love. First John 2.10 says, Whoever loves his brother abides in the light, and in him there is no cause for stumbling. Whoever loves his brother abides in the light. This is a test. How do we know that we are walking in the light? That is, we have love for our brother. In 1 John here, talks about two things that we are to use to test if we are truly in the Lord, if we are walking in the light. That is, the first is spoken of in 1 John 1 John 1, 7 to 9. That is, if we are, are, if we've confessed our sins, then He is faithful to forgive us of our sins. And so when we walk in the light, we will see our sins, and in those sins, we will repent and are forgiven of our sins. This lets us know that we are desire to reach out to the Lord, to reach out to His love and His for forgiveness. And the second is the love that is for our brothers and sisters. Whoever loves his brother abides in the light. So the second point here is to to reach out to our brothers and sisters with the love that we have received from God, to forgive our brothers and sisters as God has forgiven us. These two things come from God. God gives us love and accepts us, and He also gives us love so that we can accept our brothers and sisters. God transforms us from a person who does not have love. We only know ourselves, our family, to the point where we love others, not just to fellowship with people in our family, us four and no more. Let's just go and have dinner with just our family. Let no, no one else come. But no, we open our arms and reach out to our brothers and sisters so that they come in and fellowship with us to have God's love in our hearts. And the second point is that we are to love the person that God transforms, is to desire and love the goodness of the Lord. In Amos 5, 14-15, Seek good and not evil, that you may live, and so the Lord, the God of hosts, will be with you, as you have said. Hate evil and love good, and establish justice in the gate. Hate evil and love good. So God tells us to love good. And this passage is uh, it's like a, a speech uh, in a funeral at a memorial service. And when a person, a Jew, dies, they would read this um, speech. But this has a real value because it, it uh, illustrates for us how we were before God and it causes us 
to a righteousness through the rebirth that we have in Christ. Just like the Jews, our status in the past was that we were dead to sin. As in Ephesians 2, 5, we are dead to our sins. We acknowledge that. Just like the Jews, they were as people who have died. We also have died spiritually. But secondly, we know that Jesus Christ is God, the true one true God, has come to earth and died and resurrected to give us life. And the message and the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ is summarized in these two verses, very simple. Seek me and you shall live. live. Seek me and you shall live. Seek me and you shall live. Through the death and the resurrection of Christ, through His presence in our lives and your lives, that we are given eternal, abundant life, that we are given everlasting life. If you have Jesus Christ in your hearts, in your life, if you have been reconciled and attached to Christ, as is, you have been united in Christ, in the body, and Jesus Christ is the head. And the Lord of God says very clearly, whoever has the Son of God has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. But the condemnation of God is still upon that person. God has died and resurrected for us. And to respond, we need to repent and receive Him and submit to His total authority. And we have Jesus Christ in our lives. We would truly live. When we have Jesus Christ living in us, then we would truly live. We are resurrected from the from the um, tomb or the grave of sin. We are a new creation in the new creation. And when we have been rebirthed like that, have become a new person, then we have new desires and we there are new hates hatred we love good and we hate evil and we want to establish righteousness that is the test if you say that you belong to christ and you say that i have been uh, transformed by god but if you do not love god and hate evil then you have not been reborn the one who loves god is one who hates evil. If you say you love God and you love evil and you desire evil, then you have lied to your own self. You have deceived your own self. The one who loves God hates sin and loves good. Our righteousness in the, in the Lord Jesus Christ by faith. We are not righteous because of our own strength, by our own effort that we become good, but because we have been united with Jesus Christ that we have become righteous. In the last Bible study that we had at West Palm, I asked the people in the past, uh, what's the best way that a poor girl becomes a rich woman? And one lady said, to marry a rich man. And I said, yes, that is true. Yes, that's the quickest way. You marry a rich man and you become a rich woman. The same way. We have been... We have been... Um, poor because of sin. But when we are united with Christ, the blood of Christ cleanses us from all sins and His righteousness becomes our righteousness. We are considered righteous and God accepts us. The righteous loves the righteous things and does the righteous things. First John says that whoever loves righteousness will be righteous as he is righteous. We cannot do righteous things and become righteous. But because we are righteous people, we will do righteous things. And so we will love good and hate evil. That is called the test to know if we have Christ. The Limus test. The Limus test? In chemistry, the litmus test? I think it's called the litmus test. When you're in lab and the teacher gives you a piece of paper and it goes into acid, it becomes red. And if you put it into the liquid and it becomes al 
icon, then it becomes blue. And so they use that litmus paper to test, and you will know exactly right away if it's an asset or base. Right? It is by that litmus paper that you know. How do we know then that we are that we have been transformed by God, that we love God, and that we hate evil, that we love people and we love goodness? That is the litmus paper for us to test our spiritual life. Love is revealed through faith and the action in society, in life. And the spiritual need that we have is what we desire and what we focus on. Those who love good is has been united with Christ and has been made righteous in Christ. We love and we do not hate. First John 2.12, 11 says, Whoever hates his brother is in the darkness and walks in the darkness and does not know where he is going because the darkness has blinded his eyes. Hatred destroys the one who hates as, one, as well as the one who is hated. The one who hates people, their eyes are blinded. They cannot see the way, the road. All things are blinded by that hatred. You can't eat well, you can't sleep well, because of hate. God says, do not hate anyone. Do not hate your brother. Whoever hates his brother is in the darkness. The one who is hated is also not happy. The one who is hated is very sad because they do not have any fellowship with their brother or sister, the one who hates them. So both suffer. And God says, do not hate. We love and do not hate. First John 4.20, if anyone says, I love God and hates his brother, is a liar. For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. Do you agree? If you say that you love God and you hate your brother, you love, hate just one person, oh, that's enough. The spring of water, living water that from God to us, and when there's when you hate, it's like there's a kink in the hose, and you hold it up, and it won't pour through water. We need to resolve that kink. Then we can, the love of God will flow through us, to us and through us. The author, Jody Yoder, had shared that she came, Dorothy J., that she came to a person's house and he, uh, and she saw on the road, uh, I'm sorry, on the wall, a sign from Dorothy Day says, I really only love God as much as I love the person I love the least. I really only love God as much as I love the person I love the least. And she said that she was very puzzled by this phrase. And so later she found one that is comparable to this, First John 2, 7, 2, 11. If you cannot love the one who you can see, then you cannot love God who you cannot see. And so later she saw herself criticizing others a lot. And so she said, if I am like that, then I will only love God as much as I love that person. And so that caused her to be sad. And she saw that she could not love Jesus and love others as she should love. But then she found the answer in the Word of God. That is, as Christ loved us, we are to love others. And so now she comes to the Lord and she receives God's love, how God loves her. Now she says, Lord, love that person through me with your love, Lord. Lord, accept that person, forgive that person as you have accepted me and forgiven me. And we can only love others and forgive others as we truly are grateful to the Lord. Then we will be able to love others, to love and not hate. And next, we study together about hate. People want to destroy. They, I'm sorry, people want to uh, destroy hatred and hate. 
But the one who follows God totally loves and totally hates. To love God with all their hearts and to hate sin. And if we truly love God and we truly hate sin, then God is pleased to with us. God wants us to be people who hate. Isaiah 6 8 says, Because I, Jehovah God, hate, love righteousness and hate sin and deceitfulness. And so God wants us to hate evil, as in Amos 5 15 says, Hate evil and love God and establish justice in the gate. Pastor Henry Ward Beecher uh, in the 19th century shared about a mother who lived in a village. And, and there were some wild animals too in that village. And she was washing her clothes on the in the river, in the streams. And he saw that she saw that there was a wild animal. And then the wild animal disappeared. And she called her son's name. She ran to her house. She ran around and into the forest to see and saw the flesh, the body of her son lying there. The wolf had bitten her son, had gotten to her son, and she picked up her son, brought her son home. She hated, she hated that wolf. She hated to the point that she cannot describe. And she hated, she hated so much that wolf that killed her son. Each of our, each, each Christian must also have such hatred to sin. And yet, many parents are very careful to protect their children from different things. But they do not see the spiritual power that is trying to take away their children. The deceitfulness, the lies that are trying to take away the spiritual life of their children. And the parents don't care. The parents don't care about what friends their, their child is hanging out with. They don't care about what their children are playing on iPad, Warcraft, Witchcraft, whatever it is. They are just letting their children be. They don't pay attention what books their children are reading and what television shows or movies they're watching. But you know, whatever bad influence, we need to see it as a threat that will kill and we need to protect our children from those things. We need to hate. The author of Psalm 101 talks about his hatred, and that is also our hatred. Psalm 101, 3 to 8, I would not set before my eyes anything that is worthless. I hate the work of those who fall away. A perverse heart shall be far from me. I would know nothing of evil. Whoever slanders his neighbor secretly, I would destroy. Whoever has a haughty look and an arrogant heart, I would not endure. My eyes, I will look with favor on the faithful in the land, that they may dwell with me. He who walks in the way that is blessed. No one who practices deceit shall dwell in my house. No one. Morning by morning, I will destroy all the wicked in the land, cutting off all the evildoers from the city of the Lord. We hate and do not love. What must we not love? We must not love this world. God tells us not to love this world. In 1 John 2, verse 15, Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh and the desires of the eyes and the pride of life is not from the Father, but is from the world. And the world is passing away along with its desires. But whoever does the will of God abides forever. When I was young, I was shared the way people would catch a, I guess it's an ape. They would take a little, uh, uh, they would probably take uh, okay, so they take like a, 
a coconut or a palm leaf or something like that, and they would tie it and make it uh, into a little container, kind of sort of. And then they would put some peanuts and roast the peanuts and put the roasted peanuts into that um, pouch. And then the ape would put his hand in there to grab the, the the peanuts, but then it would be stuck and cannot get out. So the devil is like that. He would try to get us through the desires of the flesh, the desires of the eyes and the pride of life, and he would try to to tempt us to his bait, to follow possessions in this life that we thought that would bring us peace and happiness. But the more possessions and material things we have, the more unpeace we have. If we don't not use what we have been given for the Lord, then it would be just be rusted. Let us store our treasures in heaven. In this season of Christmas, we desire a lot. We want this, we want that, we want to buy this for others. We want to buy this for others. And the more we store up and we store up material things, and yet our hearts are far from the Lord. We just are so busy working to make more money, to buy more things, and yet we do not have time to come to the Lord, to fellowship with Him, to study His Word, to share His His Word to others. Then we will fall into the temptation, into the fates of the devil. Open our hands, let go of the roasted peanuts so that we won't die, and then not desire the things of this world. Maybe you have seen The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, the movie. Edmund was very easily taken by the white witch. And her attack was very easy to give him a, a good candy. And the more she, he ate of it, the more he desired to hate his brother and sisters so that he would have that candy. The desires of the life are the bait, the scheme of the devil to invite us to desire to do things that are evil and selfish to ourselves. And then it uses those things to tempt us. It uses those things to test us, to cause us hopelessness and hopelessness. And we desire money, we desire uh the enjoyment of this life, we desire things that are not good for us. And it affects our relationship with others, with God, in order to satisfy our lust, our desires. How can we fight back the temptation of the devil? The Apostle Paul says, walk in the Holy Spirit. Do not fulfill the desires of the flesh. And as John says, do not love the world or the things of this world. Walk in the Spirit. That is how we can break the bait of the devil. The first for us to not fall into the temptation of the world, of the devil, is to live true to God. We see that if we put a pot of food, flies will come and to the to the pot. But if you put the pot onto fire, onto the stove, then there will be no flies that come. The same way, if we draw close to the Lord and close to His Word, then sin will be far from us. But if we're far from the Lord, then sin will draw close to us. So draw close to, to the Lord. In 1 John 2, 28 says, Children, dwell in Him so that we will be courageous and strong. I read the story of Mr. and Mrs. Nguyen Thanh Quang. He was a short man, and the church members there would say that, uh, call him kiddingly, that he is Zacchaeus because he was short. And different from Zacchaeus, where Zacchaeus takes his money and gives to other people, this man, Quang, was very poor, but he, when he came to the Lord, the his family did not believing God and really made it hard for him. And so one day, the family decided to divide their possessions. And so he did, they invited uh, Mr. and Mrs. Quang and they gave to him 250 million Vietnamese, dollar, Vietnamese money, which is about 
five hundred dollars. So it's quite a bit of money. And so they called the Mr. and Mrs. Huang there and put that money on the altar of、uh, their their ancestors and told them light light an incense and then you will get that money. So you poor, what would you do? You poor, and there's twelve thousand five hundred on the altar, and all you have to do is light an incense for your ancestors. And he said, "Thank you, but I cannot bow down before the altar." And he left. Praise the Lord. If you were in that situation, would you bow down before that altar and get that twelve thousand five hundred? Praise the Lord that because of God's word, He was able to turn down. That temptation. Two thousand years, in, as Zacchaeus followed Christ, this man, Mr. Guang, would rather obey God than than man. The decision to obey God surely has shown his his family that God was number one in Mr. and Mrs. Guang's life. That He would provide, and He chose. He chose a righteous choice, and he walked in the ways of the Lord and glorified His name. When we follow God, we are people who love. We love God, and we love our brothers and sisters with all our hearts, and love righteousness and love good. But we are also people who hate. We hate evil. We hate people who do evil. We hate this world, this evil world. We hate Satan, and those are the things that we. Love and we hate, and the more we live close to the Lord, we will be transformed. Our affections will be transformed, so that we will know how to love and know how to hate. To love nothing more than God, and to hate nothing more than evil. And when we talk about love, there are many things that we talk about love. First of all, we love God, Matthew twenty two thirty seven, and then we love Christ, the one true Son of God. Which is Matthew three seventeen and twelve eighteen, and then we love people in Matthew twenty two thirty nine. We love people because people are created in the image of God, and then we love brothers and sisters in Christ in Psalm sixteen thirty, Psalm sixteen verse three, and then we love people who are poor and needy and in need in Psalm one forty six seven to nine, and then we love God's creation, all the creation, Psalm one o four thirty one. For all creation reveals His glory, and then we love promises, and the plans, and the will, and the purpose of God in Psalm forty-eight, one nineteen, one forty, and we love weakness and trials because those things causes us to be humble in Second Corinthians twelve ten, and then we love suffering. And difficulties because it will help us to grow and mature. In James one two to four, those are the things that we love, and there are many other things that we are to love. And also, the Word of God teaches us to hate. We are to hate、uh, worshiping idols. In Deuteronomy twelve thirty one and sixteen twenty two, and we hate worshiping、uh, in lies, in deceitfulness. In Amos five twenty one, and in Proverbs six sixteen to nineteen, we are to hate the pride eyes, the proud eyes, the lying tongue, and the hands that pour out blood. And we are to hate pride. We are to hate stealing and sin. And we are to hate the system of this world. In James four four, we love goodness, good that we in the past did not desire, and now we hate sin that in the past we love. Let us come to the Lord in prayer. We love as God loves, and hate as God hates. Hate things that God hates, and love things that God loves. Let us come to the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, in Lent, in this Christmas season, we praise you, Lord, as number one in our lives. We seek you with our hearts, Father. Father, help us as we stand. Before the schemes of the devil, so that we do not love material things, we do not love things of this world, but we only love you, Lord, and we love our brothers and sisters, and we love goodness, and we love the lost souls. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen.